Hey everybody, this is Tom from Regal Robot and Tom Spina Designs and thank you for uh, tuning in. Sorry if we're a couple minutes late, we were just trying to uh, get the office finagled and, and ready to go for this. Um, this is, I think, only the second live video we've done on Regal Robot. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about, but the real thing here is this is a Q&A. So, if you're watching, uh, just type in your questions. This is how people type. Uh, type in your questions, type in your phone, whatever, in the comments. Rob is behind the camera. He will uh, look for any of those as we go and ask him as we can. Um, I'm going to start by showing some stuff that uh, we have in the works. We have... We have so much going. <laughs> Part of the reason we're late is we had to hide a bunch of stuff we can't show yet. <laughs> so that's sort of a thing that happens now. Um, we do, for anybody that's been watching the whole magnet connect, uh, collection thing, I think I showed this guy last time, but that's our uh, Regal Robot head logo as a magnet. That's part of that elements collection, that kind of bronze and silver or stone or bone look. Uh, we are also working on this for all the fans of my other business, Tom Spina Designs. That's our Easter Island head logo. Um, these should be up uh, pretty soon, the Easter Island heads. The Regal Robot logos are already up. Um, on the Star Wars front, we just started a new series on the magnets called the Beast Series, the Beast Collection. Um, and the premier piece in that Beast Collection was the Tauntaun, and that's a digital sculpt by Darren Pattenton for us that was done based on the life-size Tauntaun, not the maquette or the, um, the stop motion, which had a little bit of a different face. So this, we really focused on the actual, the one-to-one -one Tauntauns that Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford rode. Um, rode. <laughs> Uh, and those are available right now. There's still free shipping for another few days, so if you have any interest in picking one up, this is a good time for it. We, in that process, teased what was going to be the next magnet uh, in that Beast series. Um, and that was this fellow. Uh, we showed, uh, and, uh, is this looking okay through the camera when I come up yep, like that? Yep, that's great. So, uh, this is obviously, for Star Wars fans, the Rancor from Return of the Jedi. And we developed this using the same 3D scan of the original prop that we used for our upcoming one-to-one -one prop replica Rancor. And uh, the only thing we did was we closed his mouth. <laughs> um, and it's pretty cool. That's also going to be $29. That'll be on the website um, probably in about a month. That should go up right at the same time that the collectible Rancor one-to-one -one prop replica will come out. Um, the next one in the Beast series, I'm actually going to give you a sneak peek. I wasn't going to show this yet. This is one of the things we almost got rid of. Um, but I'll just show you the, the profile, and I'm pretty sure people know exactly what that is. I won't say anymore. Um, so that's, that's what's going on the magnets. Uh, once again, if anybody has questions, anybody's wondering anything, just drop us uh, a line in the comments. Um, these are still going strong. That's uh, Baby Yoda and IG-11 as a magnet set. You can either display them separately or together. Um, and everybody's favorite. Sorry, the child. I get that wrong all the time. I still say Baby Yoda. So we, I, I know we've had a few people ask about this. So the last time we did a video, uh, thank you, Brandon. So last time we did a video, I showed one little piece of something to see if anybody guess what it is. And the way I showed it was like, okay, it's so a thing, and then I put it away. Um, so it wasn't really a fair question, but because you guys are all amazing, and because Star Wars fans are, uh, are nerds like I am, of course, immediately a number of people guessed what it was. So this was the piece I showed uh, last time around. And my question was if anybody recognized what that was. And sure enough, uh, a few people guessed it. And so this was just announced on our website. And this here, I don't know if you want to tilt in on this or something. Yeah, look at that. The camera work. <laughs> um, so this, and I'll show you where this piece went. That's, that's what I showed that, that gave it away, my big reveal. Um, so this is a one-to-one uh, -one recreation of the concept maquette for Jabba the Hutt. There were actually several versions of Jabba that were uh, done as maquettes, three of them as his full body. Um, anybody who ever watched any of the old 
making of documentaries, classic creatures, Return of the Jedi, or even better, uh, Return of the, uh, the sorry, from Star Wars to Jedi, the making of a saga, where Mark Hamill says the first tribe was too human, the second too snail-like, and then the third was just right. Well, this is Mr. Just Right. Uh, this is based on the sculpt by Phil Tippett. The original is uh, still at the Skywalker Ranch. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, there was actually another one made that was sent to England so that they could use that when doing the life-size piece, and that one's thought to have been auctioned off a while back and in a private collection. Um, what's really neat about the, uh, the sculpt here is it's, it's obviously very close to that final Jabba that we know and love, but there's all kinds of wonderful differences about them. I love just the vases and jugs of, you know, no doubt foul-smelling liquid that's on there. Um, and the fact that he's just, he's so smug. Like, he's just got this great self-satisfied look, the hands clasped on his, on his chest. Uh, lots of detail in the paint. All of this is being done in the USA. They're being cast in the US, hand-painted. Every one of them is, is painted by hand. To, uh, to get all those little drips and everything. They're gonna, obviously, because of that, they'll vary a little bit from piece to piece, but everything is gonna have that same real hand-painted feeling that Phil's original has in the archives, and that was the goal. You know, we tried to match the colors as best we could, the placement as best we could, all the drips as best we could. Um, for us, it's about giving folks uh, an authentic feeling recreation of that piece. Um, we got to see the original, uh, we got to have a whole bunch of photos done and measurements and things like that. The piece itself was then digitally recreated by my friend Tony Cipriano, who is a currently displaced Long Islander who uh, misses the pizza and calzones terribly, but is um, just one of the best artists I know and who has a real ability to bring character into it. He does a lot of classic monster stuff, and that, that's what made me think of Tony for this. You know, Phil, Phil Tippett's original sculpt on this has so much character and so much life and energy to it, and that's the kind of thing that I, I like to think that Tony brings to a project. And uh, it was really cool to take those measurements and photos and turnarounds and stuff and convert that into a virtual version of this, and then to slowly see it come together in real life and to, you know, get things high res printed and in resin and to pull those pieces off. And, you know, all of a sudden there's like, this didn't exist a little while ago and now here it is. And for me, uh, this sculpt and those old documentaries are part of what makes, made me do what I do for a living. Um, I mean, I, ever since, uh, ever since seeing those documentaries as a kid, I would just watch them and try and figure out what was happening on screen. And you'd see them doing mechanics and a Gamorrean guard's nose, and I'd be trying to figure out, like, are those strings? Are those cables? What's happening here? Um, and watching people fabricate things and sculpt things and trying to learn from it. And, um, you know, if anybody else had that same experience, let us know. Uh, I, I keep running into people who in the industry who tell me the same kind of thing. It's like, yeah, I, I used to watch that documentary all the time. I wore the tape out just trying to learn how to, you know, figure out how they were doing something. Um, so seeing this sculpt in that documentary over and over and over again just makes it so special. And so for me, I, I'm, you know, I've got one, if the camera pans at all today, you might see there's one on my shelf already. I got, you know, as soon as we had the Paint Masters done, I was like, yep, yeah, mine, I'm taking one of those. <laughs> uh, because I've just been dying to have this. And that's the way I think we do a lot of the planning here. It's, you know, what is it that we would love to have as collectors and as fans? And, you know, uh, very luckily, a lot of folks agree with us and kind of are into the same stuff. Um, what else is going on behind me here? So the other in the maquette series, so this is, uh, this is now a maquette collection. So this is, this was our first maquette piece. This is based on the original sculpture that Phil Tippett did for Empire Strikes Back. This was the, the piece they made and sent to England so that they could do the life-size pieces off of that. He's got a really cool back end with all sorts of warts and bumps and hair and things like that. Uh, the, this piece is still available on the site and um, I believe it runs $6.99. This is cast right out of Phil Tippett's original mold. 
This piece goes up Monday, so if you're watching now, and today is Wednesday, that means in just a few days you can order this on the site, and the price is going to be $349, if I remember correctly, and the limit is going to be 250 pieces. Uh, that's the same limit we did on the Tauntaun, uh, hopefully just because people who maybe collect uh, maquettes might want to get both. I wouldn't want to shortchange them on one. And uh, this will be, uh, both actually are going to be available with our payment plan, which is a totally new thing for us, and it's very high-tech, but we're figuring it out. Uh, but the, this right now is available with three payments, and this will be available with three payments on Monday. Um, I'm going to put the taunt on back. Anything else behind me anyone wants to hear about? We get a lot about the Rancor. What Rancor? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't see a Rancor. So, um, I'm, I'm not going to bring them forward, but what that is is a low-resolution test that we did of the 3D scanned Rancor that we're putting out probably in about a month. Um, there's still some final uh, approvals to get on the, the painted pieces and the, the test shots. Um, that's all being done hopefully in the next week or two, and that usually then it means about three or four weeks till it goes up on our site. Um, that's going to be available at the same time as the Rancor Magnet. Uh, it will also be available with the, uh, the three payment plan. But yeah, one, one of the things we like to do is just, you know, sometimes, uh, when you're working in something in digital space, you just need to see it in front of you and you need to, to mess with it. Um, you just gotta get your hands on stuff. So what we did was very early in the process, we took the reposed master digitally and printed that out in a quick, low resolution fashion just to get the mass of the piece, just to get the scale and the scope of it. And it also helps us do things like look at it and go, oh, you know, if we add a little more head tilt, it'll, it'll look better from this particular angle. Or, ah, you know what, we'll make the hands magnetic so they come off for shipping, because otherwise when you measure him, he's gonna have to be in a much bigger box. So that's the stuff we figure out by doing those sorts of tests. We also did a small scale test in high resolution before we did the final print. Um, and that's, uh, Again, it's just such a good chance to get your hands on something. Um, and it's also just because we wanted to play with it. Speaking of which, you should go pick it up so they can see the scale of okay. it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so this is, ta-da! Um, so that's the scale of him. He is one-to-one, one, this, this, as my chair sensors the image. Um, he is, and, and here the chair comes back. Uh, we have ghosts. Okay. <laughs> So he is one-to-one -to, -one to the original prop. So Phil Tippett would have been under the table and putting his arm through. Uh, the, I'm not gonna show his back because we actually changed his tail pose and the back a little bit. We discovered some neat stuff looking at this in, uh, in vintage reference photos. And we'll, we'll talk about that more when the final piece is done, but there are gonna be things on this no one's ever captured in the Rancor in terms of any sort of licensed piece. I haven't even seen some of the stuff on fan pieces. Uh, we got to get very, very up close and personal with the original puppet in the archives. Um, and then beyond that, to go through all of the vintage photos that Lucasfilm had of the Rancor and to really dig into that reference and pick Phil's brain and stuff like that and find out some of these details that um, no one's done yet. So that's what we're aiming to do here. Something that is one-to-one -to, -one to the original puppet, the, the just super faithful in terms of the pose and the attitude and just the overall proportions. Um, I feel like we're gonna give fans something that they've really never had before, and it is gonna be a true replica of that prop, something that you just can't get anywhere else. We have some asking you, will there be drool? Uh, yes, <laughs> there will be drool. So that's one of the things, we learned how they did the drool, that one dangly bit of drool, and we're gonna do it the same exact way for our replica. Um, and of course, CZ3 still over here. So this is the numbered edition of CZ. You know what? Last time, I don't think we really got a good close-up of him. I'm going to pull him close to the camera just to show, you know, even on the numbered edition. And I don't know if you're able to get in. Because I feel like last time, some of his distressing got blown out. Um, but he's just... You know, even the numbered edition has a lot of hand weathering on it. We're actually just, does he look, ah, you know, those eyes. It's 3D. Um, he's, we're just starting to do production on these right now. And, you know, production for us is very similar to the way we produce one-off.
Uh, this is going to be done by a handful of people, hand painting each one, hand painting all the gray markings on it, just like the way the original prop is. This is another prop. I was so excited to go and see this prop in the archives. And it's so silly because it's just this goofy, you know, bug-eyed droid with cross, cross eyeballs. But I, I don't know, there's something magical about that first movie and seeing him walk around, uh, Anthony Daniels playing him wonderfully with that shamble walking down the streets or seeing him in the, uh, the Jawa sand crawler. There's just something really cool and first movie about it. We also, uh, who was Brian Muir sculpted this for the, for the movie. He was able to confirm for us that this was not a, a prototype of Darth Vader. Darth Vader was always a separate sculpt. CZ3, he said he was provided a sketch and that it was always intended to be a droid, always intended to be its own character. Um, it does look a little like some of the prototype Vader sketches, so I can see where that, you know, that rumor might have started, but in, it was not. We have a few asking about the uh, paint on the Rancor. This... Yeah, um, it's going to be uh, hand-painted by our team here in the studio. Uh, multiple layers of, um, you know, hand-painted stuff, washes, dry brushes, things like that. Not a lot of crazy airbrush. I feel like, uh, you know, we're going back to the look on that original puppet. There's, um, that's one of the things where I, we've seen some stuff that I, I haven't seen done elsewhere that we're going to include. Um, and, yeah, just, again... All made in the USA, all hand finished, all hand painted, that kind of thing. Uh, done by, you know, effects people and restoration artists. The, the same team that uh, put together, you know, monsters for commercials for me or restore original stuff for museums, the Lucasfilm archives, all of this stuff. And uh, these are people that have had their hands on the real props and know how to paint that stuff. We got a couple ask if that's a Gamorrean guard from Mandalorian season I, two. I have no idea what anyone is talking <laughs> Neither about. Neither do I. I have no, no clue. Hey, look, a Jawa. <laughs> so, did anybody catch the Jawa? No, no, no what? Jawa buzz, I know. The, the Jawa didn't get any buzz. So, uh, that's a recent life-sized character that we just finished up. We actually just did about five of those. About five? Exactly. Exactly. Five's five. not a hard number. <laughs> um, so uh, each one was a little bit different. We gave because they were custom ordered. Everybody was allowed to kind of pick. Did they want the first movie style eyes that were squintier, the Return of the Jedi that were a little bigger, uh, how distressed they wanted things, what bandoliers they wanted, what guns they wanted, all that stuff. Um, but that's just one of the things we do in the Regal Robot Custom Character Shop, where we're able to take people who come in and have a real random request and want us to make something as a one-off or they have a few friends that pull together and maybe you know three or four people want to get something done. Uh, we're actually discussing a number of pieces right now that way and it's just to me some of the most fun we, stuff we get to do here. We got a couple ask about the price point on the um, Rancor. Um, it's not final. Uh, I'm almost certain it'll be right around $2,900 or $2,999. Um, we still have to just go through the last approvals and the final, you know, tally of what all the development cost was and stuff like that, and then what the edition size is going to be. Right now it's looking like an edition of, I don't want to say anything to get, com uh, so this is not to be uh, any kind of commitment, but probably about a hundred pieces. Um, we'll see. We have to see what the reaction's like. Uh, we'll have to see what, um, you know, how many people are really after it at that, that price point as a really high-end prop replica version of this thing rather than a statue of the character. This is the prop. This is a, you know, resin statue that looks like someone took the prop from the archives, restored it, and put it into your living room. Uh, someone's asking about payment plans for the Rancor. Rancor will definitely be on the plan, uh, payment plan. Going forward, our goal is to make all of the high-end collectible stuff available on the payment plan and all of our high-end uh, furniture stuff on the payment plan. So if anybody was ever looking at the Han and Carbonite desk, Millennium Falcon asteroid table, uh, coffee table, or the Han Solo coffee table, or any of that kind of stuff, that's all payment plan territory. Uh, our life-size Chewbacca's, so the full statue Chewbacca's, uh, are also something, we've had a few people pick those up recently and we put those on a payment plan and because those are custom pieces, um, and of course same goes for Mr. Jawa, 
but because those are custom pieces, we can customize the payment plan too. So when you're talking about an item like those Chewbacca's where it's a really high-end collectible piece, that's something where we can make you know four payments instead of three or however we work that out or change the, the down payment. Um, but uh, and those also, you know, when you're talking those custom pieces, sometimes they're one of one, sometimes they're one of five. Uh, you know, those are really, really dialed in things and everybody gets something a little bit unique because we really do that like one-on-one -on -one service when we're talking about that. Uh, we have someone asking about any salacious crumb props coming out. Um, I think, I think that's over by the Gamorrean. <laughs> I, uh, I, we're, we'd love to do some salacious crumb props. Uh, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Um, we had a couple people asking about any um, selling over to the UK, or is there a way to get the props? So right now, uh, our license only permits us to ship to the US, and that's just a limitation of the contract. Um, every licensing contract has a territory that you're allowed to sell in, and right now that's ours. Um, there is a chance that might change someday in the future. There's nothing on the, the near future that that's going to change, unfortunately. Um, we can take orders from anyone. We have lots of folks in the UK who've ordered from us, but they've always shipped to a US address. So as long as whoever's ordering is shipping to a US address, we're happy to send it to you. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do anything direct overseas uh, or outside the US or US territories. I wish we could. It, it is beyond even the contractual limitation. Like if we were to add it to the contract, there's quite a few other hoops. There's guarantees you have to do for each area. There's safety testing you have to do for every area. Uh, it, the, the potential to add a lot of cost to each piece, even if we have the opportunity, um, is there as well. So it's something we've always got to be mindful of and balance, you know, to, to make sure we're not driving all the costs up just to add one area. Will the Rancor have a signature edition? Uh, that is currently the plan. Uh, we'll announce more of that when it comes out. It will probably be one single edition and every piece will have that same signature. I don't think on that one that we're planning to do two separate editions. And if you could just uh, repeat the edition size and price for Java again? Sure. Uh, so Java is, I believe, 349 and the edition size is 250 pieces. And he's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Too, um, too snail-like. <laughs> <laughs> any plans for um, any more like sneak peeks because it's the uh, celebration week? Um, I, I would say this is probably the extent of the sneak peeks we can offer. I think we've done pretty good today in terms of that stuff. Uh, the I would assume we'll have another video like this around the time the Rancor comes out. We might even... I'm hitting Java. He's not at the Rancor. <laughs> well, he's going to hit the thing and the Rancor's over here. Um, we... We may have one in between there. There's some, some wall decor stuff Rob and I have been working on that uh, we might be able to talk about ahead of that, or maybe we tease that. Um, our, our celebration exclusives, so we had a few pieces planned. Um, one of them, we just, we have to wait till the next in-person uh, uh, celebration. It's terrible because we really want to put it out there, but it is such a, like, you have to be there kind of thing. Um, the other piece that we were going to do uh, was going to be a two-pack magnet set, and what I'll say on that is expect that to come out for uh, Black Friday for Christmas this year, and that'll be our, our sort of new piece, uh, pardon me, for Black Friday and for Christmas for folks. Uh, we have someone asking if you can make a do-back. Life-size? <laughs> um, so if anybody, if, if you haven't already looked, go to our website and search do-back. Um, we did make a sofa out of a do-back because there's something wrong with us. He's I looking for <laughs> ma maquettes of it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it'd be a neat maquette. For the most part, with the maquette series, we're trying to capture stuff that was concepted for the movies in maquette form. So the things we want to give folks are replicas of artifacts of that production. On something like the Dubak, they built that at full scale. There were sketches, but they never made a, a miniature maquette. So I wouldn't see us doing a scaled maquette. That said, we could do a scaled down version of the prop and, and call it a scaled prop replica. That would be within our license to do. But I, I think that would have to be sort of a, a, a one-off or a, a custom project and not necessarily 
um, something we put out and uh, so I think the um, I think for the maquette series everything we have planned for the maquette series so far and we have a few others planned um, are all based on things that were actual three-dimensional concept maquettes that were made for those productions questions are slowing down a bit okay <laughs> We've been going for a bit. We can probably wrap up unless yeah. anybody's got any final questions. Yeah, we'll give um, it a few a few seconds for a few yeah, final questions. I'm just wondering, did we cover? I got my secret list. On the <laughs> um, magnets, rancor. Is there a rancor? I we don't. I don't see any of it. The jaw was the reason we were late. By the way, we never rushed that in at the last minute. Um, oh, did we even? We haven't even talked about that guy. But I think he's just kind of ubiquitous uh, just kind of hanging out in the background um the uh that's one of our mandalorian pieces it's based on the armorer's skull that hangs over her workshop in the mandalorian uh season one um that's a piece that's currently available it's in the star wars decor section of our website you go to the website click decor uh click star wars rather and then go with the art and decor link uh, there's also a little five inch version of that we sell and there's a bone version of that at that same scale that pair really nicely if you want to put them on either side of the fireplace. Uh, we have a couple asking when the Rancor is going to be released. Um, approximately one month. Uh, it'll probably be a little more than that so right now it's looking at either you know last week of September or first week of October. That all assumes that you know all of our, our uh, approvals for the website and uh, everything like that get through uh, smoothly and on time, which they should, uh, and that uh, our paint master is being worked on right now, and once that's done, that all of that gets approved. Um, but assuming all goes smoothly, roughly the next five to six weeks, I would say. And I'll just repeat when the job will be available. Oh, yeah. Uh, Java comes out Monday in just a few days. And... You know, the best way to stay on top of stuff like that, any of the new additions, is uh, go to our website and write, just scroll down to the bottom and there's a link to add yourself to our mailing list. And we don't send out a ton of emails. It's like two or three emails a month on a busy month. Um, but what we'll get is anytime we tease, tease a new product or show a sneak peek of it, uh, you'll get an email about that. And anytime that we... Uh, release a new product and it's up for sale, you'll get a note about that. When it's a limited edition piece, it's great to have that little reminder because sometimes they do sell out pretty quick. Um, we tend to send those emails out 9 a.m. Eastern time and then they go up for sale at noon that same day. So you still have a little bit of a head start and a little bit of time to get ready for it and hopefully you know beat the general public there. Any maquettes from The Mandalorian? Hmm. Um, <laughs> that would be a great idea. I mean, I would sounds to good to me. One for sure. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> price again on the Rancor, R uh, rough price. Roughly uh, twenty nine ninety nine. Roughly three thousand uh, dollars. It may be a little bit less than that. I don't think it'll be any more than that. Um, but that stuff we're going to finalize in the next few weeks, along with the edition size. Yeah. Um, let's give it a couple seconds. And we'll wrap, okay. wrap it up. <laughs> any last well, questions, guys? Uh, well, in the meantime, thank you to everybody who tuned in. Uh, thank you to everybody who's watching this after the fact, because this will be up on our social for you guys to check out. Um, if anybody thinks of questions after the fact, they can either post them in the comments and we'll try and keep an eye on that and answer them, uh, or they can always email us, info at regalrobot.com. Please, if you're seeing this and you're not already following us, click through to our, our page and click to follow us because we make cool stuff and we'd love to share it with you and you can then share it with your friends and tell them to follow us and then they'll tell two people <laughs> and they'll tell two people. Uh, so we're at Regal Robot on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Pinterest and all of that. So go find us, follow us. We hope you love what we do and I uh, just thank you all so much for all the support for everything we do. Uh, the, the Tauntaun magnet that we put up uh, just, just a little over a week ago now uh, is selling great. They're making them like crazy in the back right now uh, just to get all those orders filled. And um, it's just cool that there are, are folks out there who love this the way we do and that we get to share this with you guys and that we can go and um, explore the depths of the Star Wars universe and pull stuff out, you know, like, like Jabba. That uh, isn't just the usual figures. It's not just the usual character stuff. It's really cool artifacts of these productions that inspired all of us so much so 
Thank you all, and uh, look forward to chatting again soon. Say bye, Tom. Bye.